sir, yes, sir. That's what I'm talking about, man. Again, my name is Carlos Christian. I'm the president and founder of the Starts Within organization. And what we do is we go inside of the prison. We work with individuals before they get released. And we also work with them when they come home as well. So then they don't go get reincarcerated. I've been able to go inside of the juvenile facilities. I work with the guys who are incarcerated in the juvenile facilities from Circleville to Indian River to Cuyahoga Hills. I've also, I just came back from Cincinnati at Hillcrest Academy working with those juveniles as well and I'm just so excited because I'm able to give brothers the information to where they come home they apply it and then they be on a whole nother level of living and that's why I'm so excited when I wake up so I don't say I got to go and speak to the to, to, to the ninth graders at, at, at well it was East High earlier now it's Cheney I don't say I got to go I say I get to go because I look at it as an opportunity and the reason why I look at it as an opportunity because I can give you something that can change the direction of your life. This is what I do for a living. That means that I haven't punched a clock in over five years now. So I'm just excited just to be able to have the opportunity to be able to just spill into brothers because when you spill into brothers and, and they get it and then they apply it and then they go out there and you see them just living their best life, you be like, that's what I'm talking about. So I've, I've been able to witness that. I go outside of the state. I'm in Indiana. I've, I've been to Tampa, Florida. Like I, I've been to different places and I'm taking the same message around every place that I go. What you see right here is the logo on my shirt. And this is another reason why I'd be so excited too. Cause I wake up and I see my polo and stuff. I see my, my polo hanging up and I'll be like, man, I'm gonna go over to polo and I'm gonna wear my own stuff. So I got all kind of different flavors in this right here in, in, in my stuff, the, the, the starts within organization. And what you see right here with the logo, you see this guy on the left hand side, he's a liability in the community to that guy on the right hand side who's an asset in the community. That means that this guy on the right hand side, he got a different look on his face. He like, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm liking life. This guy right here, he get a chance to eat jello with the fruit in it when he want to, right? He get a chance to watch the Browns games, right? He get a chance to say, man, you know what? I want Taco Tuesday on a Thursday just because I like tacos, right? So he just able to live life at his own pace and in his own way. And that's why he's an asset. But he also helps other people to live life just exactly the same exact way in their own way. So then that's why I'm excited to continue to push that around there. And this is the image for y'all over here. This is the image that we pushing. And I call this a walking logo. And the reason why I call this a walking logo is because I am a walking logo. That means that I was a liability in my community and then I started to become an asset in my community. But the way that I became an asset is because I didn't wait to become one. I put in the work to become one. So then, fellas, why I'm so excited and why I say, yeah, next level living. The reason why I say that is because, brothers, I paid the price, right? I paid the price to be where I'm at today. What is the price that I paid? 13 years old, when I, I grew up in a single parent household, right? And at 13 years old, I started to get information from my neighborhood where the information told me that my best way for me to be able to get to my next level of living, because all I wanted was to be able to elevate to another level of living. I just didn't want to be in these adverse conditions. I didn't want to be in conditions where it was just challenging to my spirit where I woke up and be like I gotta be here another day I didn't want to wake up like that so I started to get information from my neighborhood to try to get to another level of living so I made my decisions based on the information that I got what was the information that I got the information that I got fellas was to say that Carlos man the best way that you're gonna be able to get to your next level of living is if you sell dope so I started selling dope when I was 13 years old in the eighth grade and I committed Committed to that lifestyle. I said that I'm about to get it in and I'm about to get to it, right? And I was able to make it happen when I was in the streets and I made I, I made a little bit of money. I wasn't no millionaire, but I was a thousandaire, right? So I had thousands. I didn't have millions, but I had thousands, a few cars and things like that during my stint when I was in the streets. What happened when I was 19 years old, I found out that one of my guys that I was rolling with, right? He was one of my guys. He ended up stealing from me and I found Found out that he was stealing from me. He told somebody that he stole from me and I had to move on him. Right. So I moved on the good brother. I shot him a couple of times and then I also got hit with a, a, a 
of drug trafficking and possession of a firearm and possession of drugs. I'm telling y'all, brothers, like this is some real stuff. And I know brothers look at me like, Lowe's, that ain't you. That can't be you. Right. So I have been able to come to a place where I don't look like where I came from. And that's cool. Right. But 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 long story short, what happened to me is that I had to get a 10 year prison sentence. I was incarcerated for 10 years in Marion Correctional Institution. And I heard somebody say, dang. And I heard the one brother, he says, man, Los, man, I I, I seen you somewhere. Yeah, you that big old strong dude, right? And people look at my arms and stuff and say, brother, you strong because of that. But it's not because of my arms what makes me strong. That's just a reflection of what really is the strength of me. What is my specialty? My specialty is my mind. That means that the greatest resource that we got is in between our ears, fellas. That's our greatest resource, because if we take care of that, which is between our ears, which is our mind, if we take care of our mind, we can get anything done. We can overcome whatever. That means if you're a single parent household, you can overcome it. If you have a 10 year prison sentence, you can overcome it. Whatever you have coming against you, you can overcome it if your mind is working in the correct way. So with that 10 year prison sentence, fellas, I ended up doing my time. And when I got there, I said, man, I don't want to be here. I'm about to go ahead and do something different. And then that's when I started to develop my mind so I can think in a different way. So I will never get incarcerated ever again. Now, when I was incarcerated, one thing that I seen is people going home and then they was coming back in and then they was going home and then they was coming back in. And I say, brother, how are you going to get released? And you get reincarcerated that fast. How many people seen in their community where people have been incarcerated and then they got reincarcerated after their incarceration? Right, right. That's normal. And that's what usually happens. Right. And the reason why it happens is why? Because people don't take care of the greatest resource that they have, which is in between their ears, which is their mind, because they don't take care of their mind and they don't put their mind in in, in the way that it needs to be. They can't think on another level. If you don't think on another level, there's no way that you can live on another level and you will succumb to all of the challenges that come at you. And one thing that I realize is that challenges are going to continue to come at you. It's just about how do I navigate through those challenges, right? So I came home and and I'm ready to rock and roll because of what I did when I was incarcerated. I got into college. I graduated from college because I said that that's not where I wanted to be. So I got into college. When I was in high school, I didn't come there and I didn't really pay attention in high school because I'm like, man, I'm just coming here for real to keep my clientele. I had people who was buying bags from me inside of high school. So I used to come in there and sell my little reefer to brothers in high school, right? My friends and stuff. So I looked at high school as that. So then that's why I graduated and I actually did get my diploma from high school. But when I got into prison, but I had a low GPA. When I got into prison, I said that, man, I'm about to go ahead and get into college. So I got into business management and I graduated from business management with a 3.83 GPA. Dang, brothers ain't even feeling that. Right, like, there we go, man. Like, like, dang, man. Like, I'm like, man, brothers is a hard crowd. Like, like, man, this is a hard crowd, man. Usually brothers be like, man, that's dope, man. Like, 3.83 GPA, man, that stuff was hard in the mug to get, man. Like, I had to make some sacrifices in order to be able to get that 3.83 GPA. I had to se- separate myself from individuals in order to be able to get that 3.83 GPA. I left from, from business management, and I still had time left because I had a 10-year prison sentence. I said that I'm going to go ahead and get into administrative office technology for vocational training. Now, with administrative office technology is administrative. Oh, did I hear some snaps? Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, they was doing the same thing in Hillcrest just uh, this week. So when I went into administrative office technology, I learned the computers. That's Microsoft Excel, Word, PowerPoint, and, and Excel. See, what am I doing here? I'm doing all that I can do so my situation doesn't be re- a reflection of where I was at. So I'm trying to change my situation. I just believe that I have everything inside of me in order to be able to change my situation. I didn't believe that I had to wait for 
somebody to change my situation. I didn't believe that everything had to come in alignment for my situation to change. I didn't believe that my mother had to be there. I didn't believe that my father had to be there. I just believed that I had to be there. And I'm inside of the prison right now in the middle of the jungle and I'm just doing all of this stuff to change my situation because I'm saying that it starts within. That means that if I'm uncomfortable with it, one thing that I know is that ain't nobody feeling it like I am. So I got to make sure that I'm doing everything in my power to make sure I don't experience life like this. So I got out of administrative office technology. I'm typing on the computers, fellas. I'm talking about on some stuff like this. Boop, 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 pow, pow, pow. pow. I ain't even looking at the keyboard. I'm just like, I'm got my fingers on the on the home keys, like, cause I didn't learn it in high school. I'm like this, I'm on the keyboard, like boop, pow, 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 pow. Right. I'm getting it in. And, 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 and that was and that was valuable. That was valuable, fellas. It was just what I decided to do. But why that was so important is because I started to utilize some of those same things that I did once I came home. See, information influences thinking and thinking controls behavior. So I said that, man, I got to continue to get new information. So I said, man, I'm, I'm, I'm still got time to do. What else did I do? I said, man, I got to go ahead and get into some Spanish because I want that to be an option, too. See, the more stuff I know. Right. Yeah, I got into some Spanish. Right. Because when I was in school, I didn't really learn it. So I started to learn it when I was in the penitentiary. I said, let me go ahead and try it now. So now I was able to learn some Spanish. Y'all believe me? Huh? Who said no? Who said no? Oh. Okay, let me see. It's kind of, it's kind of, it's, it's, it's kind of rusty because if you don't use it, you lose it. I, I've been home for 12 years, fellas, so I just want to let you know that too. Like, I've been home for 12 years, so then that means that I've eclipsed my 10 year prison sentence with two years. So then that means that I've been home for 12 years. I was incarcerated for 10. I've eclipsed my 10 year prison sentence by two years. Exciting time. Oh, hold up. Your hands sweaty. Yeah. Right. Exio mucho, pero traigo mucho a la mesa. Right. I demand a lot, but I bring a lot to the table. Good brother. Where's my translator? No doubt. We going to get to Nelson. Right. Absolutely. But that's but, but but see, that's what it was all about. See, I said that I got to do whatever I need to do to change my situation. So now my main responsibility and what the starts within organization and what I'm doing when I'm going inside of the prisons, when I'm going inside of the juvenile facilities, when I'm going inside of the schools, my main message that I'm giving is that you got everything that you need and everything that you need, you got. So don't squander what you got. But so often we condition to look at the things that we don't got and we looking at all of the things that we don't have. And that's what makes us depressed. But I'm telling you, what we got is all that we need. And that's what's so exciting, because I said that, man, everything that I need is inside of me. It's inside of me. So I was able to come, come home and transition and do what I needed to do. Establish the Starts Within organization. I've written two books, fellas, two books. Prison Without Bars, It Starts Within. That's right, I'm a published author. Prison Without Bars, It Starts Within. That's my mentality in a book. How was I able to become free while I was in prison so I can maintain my freedom? And then I also wrote The Walking Logo, Taking Back My Life, Volume 2. Now, how do I build on that foundation with is prison without bars how do i go to another level everything that i'm gonna be talking about today is about our mindset victorious mindset that means that the only way that we are going to be able to win in life is if we got the mindset to warrant victories if you got a losing mentality who thinks that they can win with a losing mentality you can't win with a losing mentality. So now we got to understand what a victorious mindset is. And then we got to put in the work to develop that, that victorious mindset. But I'm going to let you know that it's not easy to develop because it offers so much benefit. Right. You get the chance to wake up and be like, yeah, man, man, it feels doggone good to be successful. That's how I wake up man. it feels doggone good to be successful. How many people in here wants to be successful? How many people in here feel like that they are worthy of success? 
See, because this is major, because a lot of times when I come in contact with people in bad situations, their minds doesn't even give them the ability to believe that they are worthy of success. So before we even get started with the rest of this presentation, I want to put out there in the air, in the atmosphere that I am worthy of success. So on the count of three, I'm going to say one, two, three. I want everybody to let people at East High hear you say that. I am worthy of success. All right. One, two, three. I am worthy of success. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, that's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, that's what I'm talking about. Hey, 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 that's what I'm talking about. That's what it's about. Listen, 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 listen. I want y'all to follow this. I want y'all to follow this. I want y'all to follow this. I'm going to give y'all some real stuff because y'all can go to another level of living with this real stuff. It's all about our victorious mindset. See, where it starts at is the belief in yourself. When you can sit up there and say, I am worthy of success and mean it, man, I'm telling you, that's where it starts at. But if you can't say that with, with conviction, then a lot of times you can't even obtain success. See, the people who are in the juvenile facilities, they say, man, it's all of this stuff that's going against me is why I can't get to where I need to be at in life. Man, my mom, see, they come up with all of these reasons and excuses, but it's no reasons for you to be there. That doesn't matter. As long as you say that I can be, then you will be. The moment that you don't feel like that you can be, you will not be able to get it done. It's nothing that can come against you if you don't come against you. If there is no enemy within, the enemy outside can do you no harm. Understand how strong that is. So where is the enemy at, fellas? The enemy is with inside of yourself. The enemy is that individual telling you that you ain't worthy for success. You can't be successful. You got too much stuff going against you. Look, you got a single parent household. Look at all of the stuff. You did too much wrong. Look at all of the wrong you done. Oh, last year was, was, was crappy for you in eighth grade. It wasn't good for you. It ain't no way you're going to be good in ninth grade. See, that's the enemy that's within that will prevent you from being able to go to the next level. But if you get rid of that enemy that's within, then you can accomplish whatever come your way. It's like on another level right now. Like, I mean, East High was up here, but now it just feel like I'm turning it up another level because it just seems like it need to be. So I don't wear it down. I just turn it up another level. Some people might get tired, but this is my call and this is what I'm supposed to be doing with life. So I'm charged all the way up, brothers. Y'all getting everything of me right now. I ain't cheating y'all one bit. Y'all getting everything of me. I drove from Columbus, Ohio to here to give y'all everything that I got. Because my mindset is not to get to have. See, so many people feel like, man, I'm trying to get it so I can have it. I'm past that. That's basic. Now I'm talking about I'm looking to get so I can give. You see the difference? I'm not sitting up there saying, man, I'm about to go out here and get this food so I can eat. How many people be like, man, I'm trying to eat. I'm trying to eat out here. Right. That's basic. This is where we level up in our thinking. Man, I'm getting food now to feed. Because if I feed, will I be eating? Why not? If you got food to feed, then you're going to have food to eat, brothers. If you got food to feed, then you will have food to eat. You got to have food to be able to eat if you're going to be feeding. So, but if you focus on feeding, I'm sorry, brother, for spraying. You just, ro just roll through it with me. Let, let, your fro let your fro soak it up, brother. Let your fro soak it up. No doubt. I appreciate you, though, good brother. I appreciate you sticking it out with me, man. No doubt.